Well hello and welcome to the Waters Stanton video channel. My name is Peter Waters, G3OJV. I'm going to talk today about the humble, or perhaps not so humble, VSWR meter. Uh, I had an email very recently from a newly licensed amateur. We'll call him John, that's not his real name, but we'll call him John. And John said to me that um, I've been on the air for several months now, I've got a transceiver, I'm quite happy with it. But one thing that puzzles me is that it's got a built-in VSWR and power meter. And if that's the case, can you tell me what the advantage is for having an external VSWR power meter? Because I see them advertised in magazines and I know lots of hams have got them, but it's not clear to me what the advantage would be. Well, <laughs> it's a very good question actually. Uh, if your radio has got the built-in VSWR on power meter, what is indeed the advantage? And I suppose the best way to answer that really is to actually look at the external VSWR power meter and see what advantages there actually are. I think the first thing, and the obvious thing of course, is that uh, an external a VSWR power meter has got a much larger display and therefore it's much easier to um, to read and the um, accuracy of the uh, power meter VSWR power meter it may be that little bit better than the one in your radio and if it's uh, no more accurate it's certainly much more easy to actually read the um, the display and uh, measure power and so forth. The other good thing about the uh, external power meter is that it has switched ranges. Now this means to say that if you're running lower power then what you can do is you can switch to a lower range and get a full scale deflection. So for example you might have a power meter that has ranges of 5 watts, 20 watts and 200 watts we'll say. The 200 watt, 100 watt range is, is obviously very good for um, a typical station which is running a 100 watt HF rig. But if you're going to run lower power then it's handy to have uh, a good reading on the meter rather than it sort of all cramped up on the left hand side um, and that means to say that you can select a lower range so if you're running QRP 5 watts or 10 watts you'd switch it to the 5 watt or the 20 watt range and you get quite a decent um, reading of it. Another advantage um, is that if you're doing some antenna work and you want to measure the VSWR um, it's handy to be able to do that at low power. Now if you're running low power on a uh, on a rig and try and use the internal uh, VSWR meter you're probably fine that it's the, the scale is just too cramped and you're not really getting any meaningful indications. With an external meter you can switch to that lower power um, and get much more meaningful indications of, um, of the uh, VSWR and that is also quite a friendly and neighbourly thing to do. If you're trying to get a decent reading on the radio of the VSWR you're going to probably have to run high power in order to get that indication. Much more neighbourly and much more friendly um, is to run much much lower power and then do the antenna measurements because um, you're not going to cause much interference if you're running sort of a, a few watts. A modern VSWR meter on the HF bands can give you full scale deflection with just one watt so that's obviously uh, very useful. Uh, on the VHF bands you may have to go a bit higher, you may have to go to about uh, three or four watts to get full scale deflection but nevertheless um, you do get indications at much lower power levels. So let's take a look at uh, a typical VSWR meter. I'm using the AVAIR uh, meter because it's a popular meter, we sell lots of these. 
If you look at the meter, this is the AV201, uh, you'll see that it's got some three power settings. It's got 5 watts, 20 watts and 200 watts, uh, exactly what I uh, mentioned uh, just now. Um, we've got the power, um, the calibration and the VSWR, which I'll come back to in a minute. And on the right hand side, we've got reflected and forward power and off. Now off is really not some particularly uh, useful function. Um, we normally keep that uh, switched uh, to on. Um, in normal use, um, obviously you, ex you select the correct power setting. And then uh, forgetting the middle switch at the moment, we go to reflective and forward power. In this um, uh, situation, we can either see the, the, the forward power um, in watts or the reflected power in watts. And uh, that is basically the uh, setting that I would normally select. But if you want to get some accurate um, VSWR measurements, then what uh, you would do is to take that middle switch down from power to cal, which stands for calibration. You'd put a steady carrier in. Um, I would suggest that you go to perhaps the FM mode, which will give you a steady carrier, and turn the power right down um, to uh, its minimum setting. That'll give you a steady carrier. It won't tax the transceiver because it'll only be running two or three watts. Then you adjust the, the uh, calibration um, for full scale deflection. You've got a calibration knob on the right hand side there, large knob. You adjust that so you get full scale um, uh, indication on the uh, meter. And then you just flick that center switch down to uh, VSWR and you get the actual VSWR. So you're flicking between calibration for, to make sure you've got the full scale and then a VSWR. On this particular meter, um, I think you get full scale on HF bands with just one watt, so it's, uh, it's very neighbourly effective. You'll notice uh, there's a blue button on the meter, which is labelled PEP, but uh, like all makes of meters, the PEP is not really PEP, it's sort of a, like an average power. Now all this is much easier to do on an external uh, VSWR meter um, rather than to uh, uh, use the internal one and as I said right at the outset you get a much better indication, you can see it better. If you're like me and have to wear glasses a lot then it's a treat to actually see um, a larger display. One thing that confuses a lot of um, uh, PAM uh, operators, particularly the newcomers is the fact that when they're on single sideband they get a fairly low power indication on an external meter. Now the reason for that is that it's an analog meter which uses a needle and that needle takes time to go backwards and forwards. Um, on speech peak it goes forward and then the, the peak is goes to trough and it then starts to go back but it can't possibly follow the uh, speech peaks and troughs of a, an SSB signal. So you tend to get a sort of like a mediocre um, uh, setting on the, on the meter, um, certainly much lower than the peak power. Um, some meters, including this one, has what they call a, um, uh, an average uh, power, and that gives us a measure of hold, but it still doesn't indicate the peak power. Uh, let me explain peak power um, on a modern transceiver. If we have a, uh, a transceiver that's rated at 100 watts and we adjust the power level uh, in the menu or on the front um, to 100 watts, then that's the maximum power that transceiver will deliver. It doesn't matter how loud you yell into the microphone, um, it won't give you more than the 100 watts. So, if you advance the microphone gain control, and this is another, this is another use of an external meter, if you advance the mic gain control, you should see the power come up, and then there's a point at which it doesn't go any further. That's the point at which you need to um, make a note of in the mic gain position 
or alternatively just uh, adjust it so that when you talk the power comes up but then when you get to the point on the mic gain where there's no increase in power just turn it back a smidge because you've got the mic gain control at the um, best position for you. Because that transceiver is rated at 100 watts and because you've set the power level at 100 watts you can be pretty confident that the power coming out of that transceiver is 100 watts PEP because you've set the mic gain control to a level at which no further power um, uh, indication is on the meter so that, that you know that the transceiver is already starting to limit. So turn your gain control up until you see the meter reading um, at a reasonable level keep turning it until you see no change in the power level on the meter and turn it back a bit. Now the meter will probably only be reading about 30 or 40 watts that's because the time lag don't worry about that you are still getting your 100 watts PEP and it works if you return if you turn your power down turn your power down on your transceiver to 50 watts and a modern transceiver is pretty accurate in that respect turn it down to 50 watts and then advance the mic gain control until you don't see any further increase in power turn it back a smidge and you can be pretty confident that you've got your 50 watts out and that is quite easy to do with an external VSWR power meter. One good thing about the internal VSWR power meter of your radio is it may well be LED bar reading and if it is then it gives you somewhat better indication of what your peak power is. I wouldn't rely on it but it just gives you a better indication. But I think in general the external VSWR meter has an awful lot going for it and there's a psychological psychological aspect as well. If you've got an external power meter, um, you're conscious it's there, you can immediately see what's happening. If there's any drop, drop off of power for any reason or something happens, the VSWR arises, it's much easier to notice it on an external power meter than it is on the internal meter. I personally like to have an external VSWR power meter. I just like to see that needle moving about and that everything is working as I as I expected and want it to be. I can even operate without my glasses on. <laughs> you may think after all that, well, I don't really want to buy one. That's up to you. But I think there's a lot of advantages. They're not overly expensive. The range that we do, we, we do the AVAR range, which is very, very good. They're very good and very good value for money and pretty accurate. If you want super accuracy, then go for the diamond range. They cost considerably more money, but they are very, very good accurate meters. And I suppose in some respects, you should treat a VSWR meter as a bit of an investment. It's not a fashionable item. It's not going to change. It's not like the sort of icon on the Acer radio that's going to change two years later and you're worried whether you should buy it now or not. The uh, VSWR meters, they don't change. I mean, the AVAR range that we do now has been around for ages. The Diamond range has been around even longer. Um, but they are instruments for measuring. Um, I do remember <laughs> at the very first VSWR meter I bought, it was, it was called... Um, yes, yeah, it, it was made by Lab Gear. It was, it was a second-hand meter when I got it. Um, and the name lab gear really didn't give uh, any indication as to the quality of the meter. Um, I think um, calling it lab gear was a bit optimistic. Uh, to give you an indication, it had Bell and Lee TV sockets uh, in and out. And um, uh, I, well, it indicated something was happening. I'm not sure how accurate it was, probably not very accurate, but going back to what 1961 or 62 I suppose it was um, it was a VSWR meter and in those days it was pretty unusual to have one so I was quite I was quite happy to have this meter that um, indicated something it, I think it did indicate VSWR after a fashion but I had nothing to compare it with yes the lab gear VSWR meter there we are anyway I hope this video has been useful I hope it's helped you and particularly if you're a newcomer, perhaps it's answered the question as whether or not you need an external VSWR meter. So, 
thank you for watching this video don't forget if you enjoy these videos please press the subscribe button on the uh, on the right hand side there and um, it's nice to know that uh, you are enjoying the videos if you've got any criticisms obviously put them at the bottom and uh, we'll take note of them so in the meantime thanks for watching enjoy your hand radio take care keep safe see you soon